In this chapter, we shall study the phenomena of reflection and refraction of light using the straight line propagation of light. These basic concepts will help us in the study of some of the optical phenomena in nature. We shall try to understand in this chapter the reflection of light by spherical mirrors and refraction of light and their application in real life situations. There are two theories about the nature of light, wave theory of light and particle theory of light. According to wave theory, light consists of electromagnetic waves which do not require a material medium, like solid, liquid or gas, for their propagation. The wavelength of visible light waves is very small. The speed of light waves is very high, being about 3108 meters per second in vacuum. According to particle theory, light is composed of particles which travel in a straight line at very high speed. The elementary particle that defines light is the photon. Some of the phenomena of light can be explained only if light is considered to be made up of waves whereas others can be explained only if light is thought to be made up of particles. For example, the phenomena of diffraction, bending of light around the corners of tiny objects, interference and polarization of light can only be explained if light is considered to be of wave nature. The particle theory of light cannot explain these phenomena. On the other hand, the phenomena of reflection and refraction of light and casting of shadows of objects by light can be explained only if light is thought to be made of particles. Wave theory of light cannot explain these phenomena. Thus, there is evidence for the wave nature of light as well as for particle nature of light. Reflection of light when light falls on the surface of an object, some of it is sent back. The process of sending back the light rays which fall on the surface of an object is called reflection of light. When a ray of light falls on a plane mirror or any other plane surface, it is reflected according to some laws called the laws of reflection of light. We have a plane mirror MM, the ray of light which falls on the mirror surface is called the incident ray. In figure, AO is the incident ray of light. The incident ray gives the direction in which light falls on the mirror. The point at which the incident ray falls on the mirror is called the point of incidence. In figure, point O on the surface of the mirror is the point of incidence. When a ray of light falls on a mirror, the mirror sends it back in another direction and we say that the mirror has reflected the ray of light. The ray of light which is sent back by the mirror is called the reflected ray. In figure, OB is the reflected ray of light. The normal is a line at right angle to the mirror surface at the point of incidence. In other words, normal is a line which is perpendicular to the mirror at the point of incidence. The normal has been represented by a dotted line to distinguish it from the incident ray and the reflected ray. The reflection of light from a plane surface or from a spherical surface takes place according to two laws, which are known as the laws of reflection of light. First law of reflection According to the first law of reflection of light, the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal all lie in the same plane. For example, the incident ray AO, the reflected ray OB and the normal ON all lie in the same plane. Second Law of Reflection According to the second law of reflection of light, the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. We can also state the second law of reflection of light as follows by writing the angle of incidence first. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. What happens when a ray of light falls normally or perpendicularly on the surface of a mirror? 
If a ray of light is incident normally on a mirror, it means that it is travelling along the normal to the mirror. So, the angle of incidence for such a ray of light is zero. And since the angle of incidence is zero, therefore, according to the second law of reflection, its angle of reflection will also be zero. This means that a ray of light which is incident normally or perpendicularly on a mirror is reflected back along the same path. Spherical mirrors A spherical mirror is that mirror whose reflecting surface is the part of a hollow sphere of glass. The spherical mirrors are of two types, concave mirrors and convex mirrors. A concave mirror is that spherical mirror in which the reflection of light takes place at the concave surface or bent-in surface. A concave mirror is in which the concave reflecting surface has been marked A, the other surface B in having short, oblique lines is the non-reflecting surface. A convex mirror is that spherical mirror in which the reflection of light takes place at the convex surface or bulging out surface. A convex mirror is in which the convex reflecting surface has been marked B, the other surface A, having short, oblique lines is the non-reflecting surface. We will now understand the meaning of some new terms such as center of curvature, radius of curvature, pole, and principal axis, which are used in the study of spherical mirrors. The center of curvature of a spherical mirror is the center of the hollow sphere of glass of which the mirror is a part. The center of curvature of a mirror is represented by the letter C. C is the center of curvature of the concave mirror and convex mirror. The center of curvature is not a part of the mirror. It lies outside the reflecting surface of the mirror. The radius of curvature of a spherical mirror is the radius of the hollow sphere of glass of which the mirror is a part. The distance CP is the radius of curvature of the concave mirror and convex mirror. The radius of curvature of a mirror is represented by the letter R. The center of a spherical mirror is called its pole. In other words, the middle point of a spherical mirror is called its pole. P is the pole of the concave mirror and convex mirror. The pole of a spherical mirror lies on the surface of the mirror. The straight line passing through the center of curvature and pole of a spherical mirror is called its principal axis. C is the center of curvature of the mirror and P is the pole of the mirror. So the line XY passing through C and P is the principal axis of the mirror. The principal axis is normal or perpendicular to the mirror at its pole. That portion of a mirror from which the reflection of light actually takes place is called the aperture of the mirror. The aperture of a spherical mirror is represented by the diameter of its reflecting surface. Principal focus and focal length of a concave mirror The principal focus of a concave mirror is a point on its principal axis to which all the light rays which are parallel and close to the axis converge after reflection from the concave mirror. Look at figure in which a parallel beam of light rays is falling on a concave mirror. Point F is the principal focus of the concave mirror because all the parallel rays of light converge at this point after getting reflected from the concave mirror. Since all the reflected light rays actually pass through the focus of a concave mirror, therefore, a concave mirror has a real focus. The focus of a concave mirror is in front of the mirror. Since a concave mirror converges a parallel beam of light rays, it is also called a converging mirror. The focal length of a concave mirror is the distance between its pole and principal focus. In figure P is the pole of the concave mirror and F is the principal focus, so the distance PF is the focal. 
Length of this concave mirror The focal length of a mirror is denoted by the letter F. Principal focus and focal length of a convex mirror The principal focus of a convex mirror is a point on its principal axis from which a beam of light rays, initially parallel to the axis, appears to diverge after being reflected from the convex mirror. In figure, a parallel beam of light rays is incident on a convex mirror. Each ray of light is reflected by the convex mirror and the reflected rays diverge from the mirror surface. Let us produce all the reflected rays backwards so that they appear to meet at a point F behind the convex mirror. Now, to a person looking into the mirror from the left side, all the reflected rays appear to be coming from the same point F behind the convex mirror. This point F is the principal focus of the convex mirror. It should be noted that the reflected rays do not actually pass through the focus F of a convex mirror, therefore, a convex mirror has virtual focus. Another point to be noted is that the focus of a convex mirror is situated behind the mirror. The focal length of a convex mirror is the distance from the pole P to its principal focus F. Relation between radius of curvature and focal length of a spherical mirror For a spherical mirror having small aperture, the principal focus, F, lies exactly midway between the pole, P, and center of curvature, C. So, the focal length of a spherical mirror, a concave mirror or A. Convex mirror is equal to half of its radius of curvature. If F is the focal length of a spherical mirror and R is its radius of curvature, then F is equal to R by 2. Image formation by concave mirror convex mirror Image formation by concave mirror one image formed by a concave mirror when the object is placed between pole and focus of the mirror, object between P and F. We have an object AB placed between the pole, P and focus, F, of a concave mirror, that is, the object is within the focus of the concave mirror. To find out the position and nature of the image, starting from A, we draw a ray AD parallel to the axis. This ray gets reflected at D and then passes through the focus F. A second ray of light AE passing through the center of curvature C strikes the mirror normally or perpendicularly at point E and gets reflected back along the same path. From the above discussion we conclude that when an object is placed between the pole P and focus F of a concave mirror, the image formed is one behind the mirror two virtual and erect, and three larger than the object, or magnified. Two when the object is placed at the focus of a concave mirror, object at F. The object AB has been placed at the focus, F, of the concave mirror. Now, the parallel ray of light AD, coming from the top of the object, gets reflected at D and passes through the focus F, giving us the reflected ray DX. A second ray of light A passing through the center of curvature C is reflected back along the same path giving us another reflected ray EY. We find that the reflected rays DX and EY are parallel to one another. These parallel rays will intersect at a far-off distance to form an image at infinity. M. From this discussion we conclude that, when an object is placed at the focus of a concave mirror, the image formed is, 1, at infinity, 2, real and inverted, and 3, highly magnified, or highly enlarged. T. When the object is placed between focus and center of curvature, object between F and C, the object up has been placed between the focus F and center of curvature C of a concave mirror.
Now, a ray of light AD parallel to the principal axis gets reflected at point D and then passes through the focus F. A second ray of light AE passing through the center of curvature C falls normally on the mirror surface at E and returns along the same path. Thus, we have two reflected rays DF and EC which are converging in the downward direction. If we extend these rays further in the downward direction, they actually intersect at point A dash. Thus, a dash is the real image of point A of the object. To get the complete image we draw a dash B dash perpendicular to the axis from point A dash. Thus, a dash B dash is the real image of the object AB and it can be received on a screen. When an object is placed between the focus, F, and center of curvature, C, of a concave mirror, the image formed is, 1, beyond the center of curvature, 2, real and inverted, and, 3, larger than the object. 4. When the object is placed at the center of curvature of a concave mirror, object at C, the object of, has been placed at the center of curvature C of the concave mirror. A ray of light AD which is parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus F after reflection. Now, the second ray of light that we usually use is the one passing through the center of curvature C. But in this case the object itself is placed at the center of curvature, so we cannot use this ray of light to locate the image. Here we will use rule number 3 of image formation which says that a ray of light passing through the focus of a concave mirror becomes parallel to the principal axis after reflection. So, we now take the ray AE passing through the focus F, it strikes the mirror at point E and gets reflected in the direction EA dash parallel to the principal axis. When an object is placed at the center of curvature, C, of a concave mirror, the image formed is, 1, at the center of curvature, C2, real and inverted, and, 3, same size as the object. Punch. When the object is beyond the center of curvature of the concave mirror, object beyond C, the object AB has been placed beyond the center of curvature C of the concave mirror. A ray of light AD which is parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus F after reflection. A second ray of light AE passing through the center of curvature falls normally on the mirror surface at E and returns along the same path. The two reflected rays intersect at a dash. Thus, a dash is the real image of point A of the object. To get the complete image, we draw a dash B dash perpendicular to the axis. Thus, a dash B dash is the complete image of the object AB. When an object is placed beyond the center of curvature, C, of a concave mirror, the image formed is, 1, between the focus and center of curvature, 2, real and inverted, and, 3, smaller than the object, or diminished. Che? When the object is at infinity, suppose an object, an arrow pointing upwards, has been placed at infinity in front of the concave mirror, since the object is very far off, it cannot be shown in the diagram. Because the object AB is very far off, the two rays AD and AP coming from its top point A are parallel to one another but at an angle to the principal axis. These parallel rays get reflected at points D and P and then intersect at point A dash in the focal plane of the mirror. Thus, a dash is the real image of the top point A of the object. Image formation by a convex mirror 1. When an object is placed anywhere between pole, P, and infinity in front of a convex mirror. An object AB placed in front of a convex mirror M anywhere between pole P and infinity. A ray of light AD, parallel to the principal axis of the convex mirror, strikes the mirror at point D. Now, 
according to the first rule of image formation, this parallel ray of light should appear to be coming from focus F after reflection. So, we join the points D and F by a dotted line and produce the line FD towards the left in the direction DX. Now, DX gives us the reflected ray which appears to be coming from focus F of the convex mirror. We have now to draw a second ray of light from the pointer going towards the center of curvature C of the convex mirror. For this we join the point A with point C by a line which cuts the mirror at point E. The line from A to E is a solid line and it represents a real ray of light but the line from E to C is a dotted line which represents a virtual ray of light. Now, A represents a ray of light going towards the center of curvature C of the convex mirror. According to the second rule of image formation, this ray is reflected along the same path A but it appears to be coming from the center of curvature C. When an object is placed anywhere between pole, P, and infinity in front of a convex mirror, the image formed is, 1, behind the mirror between pole, P, and focus, F, 2, virtual and direct, and, 3, diminished, smaller than the object. When the object is at infinity, Suppose an object, an arrow pointing upwards, has been placed at infinity in front of the convex mirror, since the object is very far off, it cannot be shown in the diagram. Because the object AB is very far off, the two rays AD and AP coming from its top point A are parallel to one another but at an angle to the principal axis. The ray AD gets reflected in the direction DX and the ray AP gets reflected in the direction PY. When the diverging reflected rays DX and PY are produced backwards, as shown by dotted lines, they intersect at point a dash in the focal plane of the convex mirror. Thus, a dash is the virtual image of the top point A of the object. Sign Convention for Spherical Mirrors These days new Cartesian sign convention is used for measuring the various distances in the ray diagrams of spherical mirrors. According to the new Cartesian sign convention, 1. All the distances are measured from pole of the mirror as origin. 2. Distances measured in the same direction as that of incident light are taken as positive. 3. Distances measured against the direction of incident light are taken as negative. 4. Distances measured upward and perpendicular to the principal axis are taken as positive. 5. Distances measured downward and perpendicular to the principal axis are taken as negative. The new Cartesian sign convention for mirrors the object is always placed on the left side of the mirror so that the direction of incident light is from left to right. Since the incident light always goes from left to right, all the distances measured from the pole, P, of mirror to the right side will be considered positive. On the other hand, all the distances measured from pole, P, of mirror to the left side will be negative. Mirror formula The distance of an object from the pole of a mirror is known as object distance. Object distance is denoted by the letter U. The distance of image from the pole of a mirror is known as image distance. Image distance is denoted by the letter V. The distance of focus from the pole of a mirror is known as focal length. Focal length is denoted by the letter F. A formula which gives the relationship between image distance, V, object distance, U, and focal length, F, of a spherical mirror is known as the mirror formula. Here V distance of image from mirror U distance of object from mirror and F focal length of the mirror.
Magnification The size of image formed by a spherical mirror depends on the position of the object from the mirror. The image formed by a spherical mirror can be bigger than the object, equal to the object or smaller than the object. The size of the image relative to the object is given by the linear magnification. The ratio of the height of image to the height of object is known as linear magnification. That is, magnification height of image by height of object. Where M magnification H to height of image and H1 height of object in our ray diagrams, the object is always placed above the principal axis, so the height, H1, of the object will always be positive. We also know that a virtual image is always formed above the principal axis, therefore, the height, H2, of a virtual image will be positive. But a real image is formed below the principal axis, so the height, H2, of a real image will be negative because it is measured in the downward direction. From this discussion we conclude that though the height of object H1 is always positive, the height H2 of the image can be either positive or negative. Since a concave mirror can produce virtual images as well as real images, the magnification produced by a concave mirror can be either positive or negative. A convex mirror, however, forms only virtual images, so the magnification produced by a convex mirror is always positive. Another point to be noted is that if the magnification M has a value greater than 1 then the image is bigger than the object, that is, the image is magnified or enlarged. And if the magnification M is exactly 1, then the image is of the same size as the object. But if the magnification is less than 1 then the image is smaller than the object. A concave mirror can form images which are smaller than the object, equal to the object or bigger than the object. Therefore, the linear magnification, or just magnification, M, produced by a concave mirror can be less than 1 equal to 1 or more than 1. On the other hand, a convex mirror forms images which are always smaller than the object, so the linear magnification, m, produced by a convex mirror is always less than 1. A plane mirror forms images which are always of the same size as the object, therefore, the magnification, m, produced by a plane mirror is always 1. The linear magnification produced by a mirror is equal to the ratio of the image distance to the object distance with a minus sign. That is, magnification image distance by object distance.